Hi, my little assistant. Say hi, guys. I'm Baby Pieces. Mama's helper for the day. Hey there, Sharice here from Pieces Calligraphy. Welcome to day three of Utober. Utober is a challenge I've committed myself to for the entire month of October. I will be filming daily videos and posting them here. So be sure to subscribe so you'll get updates when they happen or just come back and check it out. So for today, I wanted to talk about practice. I get a lot of questions about how to practice, what are the right things to practice, and I will definitely share practical tips, actual practice lessons and guides that you can try yourself, but I thought I would spend some time in this series since we just started. I wanted to kind of stress the importance of how to practice with the right mindset. So when I talk about mindset, what I'm talking about is not just practicing without thinking about it or being mindless about it or being completely random. Instead, I'm talking about being intentional, being deliberate and being very purposeful with your practice. And the way to do that is first to take a check and look at where you are in your journey currently. A lot of us are coming from different backgrounds or different stages in our journeys. So when it comes to practicing brush calligraphy, I don't want to just hand you the exact things to practice. Instead, I'll give you some tips, but it's up to you to make the conscious effort about what exactly to practice based on where you're at in your journey. So let's talk about what that means. What you can do is take a quick audit of yourself and see where you are. Am I a complete beginner and I've never done this before? Then maybe I need to really pick up some beginner tips. Am I a little bit more advanced? I kind of have an idea of what I'm doing. Then as I share tips, try to go a step further and really just notice little things that you can do to polish your letters, really make that extra stride or go that extra mile when it comes to your own writing. In this example, I'm going to show you how to take a word and break it down to find exactly where you need to practice. Because like I said, we're all coming at this from different levels and different stages in our own journeys. So it's important to be able to turn my advice and my tips into something that's practical for you. So let's take this word for example. I'm going to write out the word learn. The pen here I'm using is a Tombow Fudenosuke. Now you may either be thinking, oh my gosh, how am I going to get to that level? <clears throat> Excuse me. Or you're probably thinking, okay, great. I have something to practice. Now I just need to figure out how to apply it to my own writing. So when you're looking at this letter L here, what this L is really comprised of is an entrance stroke and an ascending stem loop. Okay. Don't know really what happened to my ascending stem loop there, but you can basically practice these entrance strokes if that's something that you're struggling with and maybe you need to just get them to be sh unshaky and thin or maybe you need to practice the ascending stem loop by itself and then if that's even too much what you can do is break down this ascending stem loop because what essentially what we have here is an underturn and that underturn can even be further broken down into a sh the first part of the stroke and the second part of the stroke, which is pretty much our entrance or exit stroke. And then you can put that together and make an extended underturn. And then you can start adding your loop. You can do two things. You can just add the loop directly or you can practice an actual ascending stem loop without the connection to the underturn. So see how all of these different strokes, I'm breaking down different ways to go back and build it all together so that I can put together my entrance stroke and my ascending stem loop. Okay, the reason why I really wanted to point out this one here is because it's really nice to break it up right there in the middle. That's just a really great way to break down such a, a stroke that can be kind of overwhelming in the beginning. Another 
area in my word up here I wanted to break down is the oval okay so the oval is pretty tricky a lot of my students express how much they struggle with this stroke okay and I think a lot of the hard part the the hard part comes in creating the oval in a clock counterclockwise direction that can be really difficult and then also there's not much going on it's such a simple stroke that it's easy to see any slight bit of of imperfections in the stroke okay as you can see here none of my ovals are perfectly the same but essentially you just want to make sure you have that thick part on the left of the axis of your stroke and the thin part is all on the right so what that can translate into is simply practicing that tapered off stroke where I started a hairline a point and then I add pressure then I immediately go back to a hairline or a point and then I'm going to just practice that close that closing stroke okay and you can even create your oval that way I just have that personal preference of starting a little bit below my waistline and then creating my oval okay and then one other way I want to break down this word here is this stroke from this bottom part of the, the, the last part of the R into the N. It can be quite an overwhelming stroke. Okay, we can call this a backwards or a reverse compound curve. So a regular compound curve is like this where we have the thin stroke, we have our thick down stroke, and then we follow, follow um, finish with a thin up stroke. But when we have a reverse compound curve, we're actually doing the, re the reverse. So we have a thick downstroke, a thin upstroke, and then back down into a thick downstroke. Okay, so you can just break that down into this stroke first. Then you can do the thin part. And this tends to be easier for me if I just break it down right here after that first downstroke because going from this thin upstroke and then gradually curving down can be something easy to practice. So I would take each of these strokes and keep doing that. Okay, and then the great thing about all of these strokes, look at when I'm not looking at my word that I was trying to write. These strokes just seem to not make sense at all. I mean, you know that they're brush strokes, but it's just amazing how breaking down a word can really make the strokes that you practice much more bite-sized. So tying this back into our lesson for the day, maybe you're at the point of just breaking down the letters and you already know how to create all of the letters so you can just keep practicing your letter L's and maybe it's about just being confident in your letters first then you can practice your letter E, okay? And then you can practice your letter A. So I'm just basically showing you the different parts of the word, but what you would do is you would take each of these parts and practice that. So say you only have five minutes in your day, then I would really just take one or two of these letters and just practice those letters. Or maybe you're gonna take some of these strokes that you really had troubles with and practice those, and that will be your five minutes of practice for the day. See how breaking it down, it may seem like a step backwards. I mean, you literally are breaking down the word, but then when you go back to build it again, you'll be much more confident and much more fluid and consistent in your strokes. So. Don't take it lightly, practicing the basic strokes, breaking down the letters, and just being very thoughtful and mindful in your practice. So there you have it guys, my way of preparing you mentally for how to practice the right way and the right way for you because that's really what's important here. I can share with you all of the practice drills, all of the ways to work the pen, but if you aren't using that critical eye and ch uh, checking yourself and making sure that you're really on the right track for you, then it can almost be pointless or you might just be going off in the wrong direction. So. Just know that even though it may seem kind of tedious or you may feel like you're set back a couple of steps, it's really important in the long run for you to do something like this. 
So I hope this was helpful for you. Let me know in the comments below, did this help you? Did you understand what it meant to have a good mindset and to be able to identify where you are in your journey? Let me know what is something that you really wanna practice on right now because it is just great to hear. I, I know in the in day one of Utober, a lot of you were sharing me where you are in your journey. Now it's a, let's buckle down and get a little bit more specific. What exactly are you trying to practice? So let me know in a comment below and I will see you tomorrow for day four of Utober. Thanks for watching. Exciting. So, <coughs> oh, do you want to say hi? Hello, people. Feature calligrapher in the house. Had to pull this little one with me. She wasn't having it down there. <laughs> what are we going to do now? Are we going to go conquer the day? Yeah. Yeah, we are. <laughs>